Jay, you maybe want to get next to me, bro, because you're going to be chiming in on some of this too, right? And you, so, you want to use mine? All right, let's go. Okay. Oh, PRG Zoom? Yeah, it's just waiting now for the host to start. Oh, I have the same one, but I think it's the other. It That's shouldn't be. That one you don't need to be let in. Um, maybe try it again. Just exit out. PRGZoom.com. Go to my Tuesday meeting. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Spence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone's in. PRGZoom.com. Just go to that website. All right, guys. Uh, let's kick it off. So, um, Today's Thursday session, guys, it's really going to be an elevated conversation today. Um, I say elevated because it's on the Thursdays we want to talk about. Get yourself. Turn your volume down. Get yourself. Turn your volume down. All right, let's start again. <laughs> Happy Thursday, guys. Today's the uh, Level Up coaching session. We're having a, an elevated conversation, guys, about some, some of the business fundamentals that Jason and I have learned over the past 20 years. Um, 20 years, man. Wow. Almost 20 years. A long time. Makes us old, right? We're the OGs in the office now. We used to be the young guys. Um, but um, I always want to start off with mindset, guys, before we kind of talk about what we're going to talk about. Um, as you progress through your career in real estate, it's going to be important that you are also progressing in your mindset and how you look at the business. And um, a big reason why we've had success over the years is we're just always reevaluating our business, always looking at the standpoint of how can we improve um, and also realizing that hustle is only going to get you so far. Um, systems have to come into play. Um, being disciplined has to come into play, how you view your business has to come into play, looking at your business from a bigger picture and not just like, what's the next deal am I going to get? It's just really a different mindset that you have to have if you want to get yourself to the next level. Uh, like you heard me say in the Tuesday meeting, you can hustle all you want. You can close a lot of deals by just strictly hustling and working hard and um, you know, coming in early, staying out late, showing a bunch of homes, meeting a bunch of clients, but that is only going to get you so far in terms of your time freedom, your money freedom, um, being able to leverage and, you know, scale your business over the years, you have at some point realize that, uh, it's not just hustle. You have to match the hustle with systems and working on your business and understanding like the big fundamentals of what it takes to grow a, a business. Right. So that's really the mindset behind it. So I made a bunch of notes because there's a bunch of things that I wrote down. And, really quicker again. Yeah. And again, guys, um, I think, you know, I see there's some newer people that are on, on this uh, on this call with us right now. And, and a lot, you know, some of us do have to focus on developing basic skills. Yep. Right. So again, I want us to understand that this is the, the higher level uh, of, in the sense of that you've already been producing, you've closed, you know, millions and millions of dollars of real estate but again the newer people on this call this is something to kind of look forward to right so it's something that you can get familiar with something that you can get an idea of what to work toward and and for the people that that are doing millions and millions of real estate right now this is a huge mind shift and i know enrique kind of touched on it but i know for personally we would go to these masterminds and it was, you know, our coach was like, hey, we're going to be pulling you guys out of production. Or we're going to be leveraging certain parts of your business. And for me, while, while I was working hard hustling, I really didn't see it. I really didn't see it until we started really putting in the calendar, putting time to work on our business. And, and again, so it's I want to make sure we, we kind of show you guys, because I, I know we have a few different uh, levels on this on this call today. But. Whether you're brand new, whether you've closed millions of dollars in business, this is a great conversation to have. And just remember, guys, it's definitely a mind shift to get to that next level. Yep. Um, so, yeah, like you said, if you're newer, you got to do the foundational stuff, right? You got to learn the scripts, the contracts. You got to be able to show up. You got to be able to put in the time and all that good stuff. But once you're doing that, you're starting to get the results. You're starting to produce. How do you go from doing 
you know, 10, 15, 20 deals to doing 30, 40, 50 deals in the same amount of time that you were doing the 10 to 20, right? Um, how do you now take some of the money that you're making and reinvest that back into your business so that you can create more leverage or you can create more production and all the different things, right? So one of the big key concepts that we learned from our coach, uh, and mind you, we did coaching for over five years and we're still doing coaching. We did one particular coaching program uh, called Real Estate B-School. We were paying probably 15 to 1700 bucks a month for this coaching program for like five years straight. So if you do the math, like probably at least a hundred grand or more yeah. over that five year uh, period. And then we would travel to different events and stuff like that. So yeah, easily over a hundred thousand guys. Easily over a hundred thousand, maybe 150,000 if you add up all the travel and stuff like that for these events. Um, and that was just in five years, right? And in those five years, like we learned so many things that just really expanded our mindset that took our business to the next level. That's really when we started to see a lot of the growth that we, you guys see today, the 10 years, like prior to that, you know, when we got into business, it was just strictly hustle, work hard, some sort you know, little systems here and there, assistance. assistance, stuff like that. But it wasn't nearly like thinking the way we think right now. So the big turning point was being exposed to how these people were doing business. So one of the key concepts that I wrote down is we have to build our business with the end in mind. And what do I mean by that? right like sometimes we're in the business and we're just thinking about right now we're just thinking go out and chase deals but we're not thinking like where do i really want to be in five years where do i want to be in 10 years it's a conversation that you need to have with yourself right really taking the time to sit down and write where do i see myself in the next five years 10 years where would i like to be what would i like to uh, my business to look like because when you can have that vision of where you want your business to be then you can start reverse engineering and kind of work backwards from there. So if you know, like in five years, hey, I don't want to be working with any buyers. I only want to work with sellers or I want to be a team leader or I want to have my own office or, I, you know, things like that. Or, or I don't even want to be in the business. Right. Like that's that could be something for you guys. Is light twitching or is that just. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just yeah. OK, but that's the thing. When you know what you want and what the ultimate end goal is. And that may change over time, right? But when you at least have an idea of this is where I want to be, then you can start saying, okay, I'm going to start working on building the things little by little today that's going to get me closer to my end goal. Does that make sense? Versus working hard, working hard, not really thinking about where I want to be in the future, just working hard. You're like, oh, this sounds cool. I'm going to work towards that. And oh, this sounds cool. I'm going to start working towards that. And you're kind of just all over the place. For us... And this may not be for everybody. Like we grinded for a long time, right? 10 plus years. And I got to a point where I said, I didn't want to grind so much anymore. I didn't want to have to work as hard anymore. I wanted to build a business that ran mostly on its own. And I only wanted to do like a handful of things in my business that I really enjoyed doing. Um, and I slowly started to build the team and the company and the systems around that, right? Um, and to ultimately where now I'm not in production and most of my time is focused on coaching and training and recruiting and stuff and building the business, which is really what I'm passionate about, right? I'm passionate about the coaching, the training and building the business. I'm not as passionate today about helping clients necessarily. And I don't say that, um, to sound arrogant or cocky or like I'm too good to help clients. I just, I like helping agents more than I like helping clients. Like I love, I like helping people believe in themselves and helping them like build their business and stuff like that. I really get a kick out of that versus going out and showing someone homes. And I, and I think again, guys, I think indirectly he is helping the clients because he's providing you, providing our agents and our team with high level skills so that we can, we can go ahead and service our clients at a high level, right? We have, we have different tools or different uh, things that Enrique leverages to go ahead and give that client that high level experience. Because again, he can't, he can't do it all. He can't help as many families without the team that we have here. Exactly. Right? So I still want to sell a lot of homes and I still want to impact a lot of people's lives. And I still love to see when people are getting their keys and when people are happy, but I don't necessarily want to be the one doing all that work. If that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. That I did that for a long time. And then it got to a point where the next level for me was to figure out a way how to get out of that, but still be able to produce a lot. And that's where the team comes into play, right? So having great partners on our team 
and equipping our team with all the skills and stuff so that they can go out and produce at a high level. So I'm sharing my personal story, but I want you guys to think of what's your story going to be, right? Like, where do you want to be in five years? Where would you like to be in 10 years? And I knew that going from producing and hustling to getting to a point where I didn't produce anymore, but we were still closing a lot of deals, that was going to take time. It wasn't going to happen overnight, right? It was something where little by little, I had to start slowly going in that direction and start putting things in place to now we're at that point where I'm not really producing anymore. Um, really quick. And, yeah. and again, guys, um, I think it's important to understand that, you know, just I know Enrique's personality really well where he wanted to do it all. No one did it as well. Anyone, no one could do it as well as he could, right? All the marketing, all these, you know, even going on listing appointments, servicing buyers. He, he really, he was, he's really good at it, but he, again, and the reason why I'm sharing this is because I think it's definitely a mind shift where we have to let go in certain areas of our business, right? We have to let DJ, you know, do some of the marketing for us. We have to let go. We have to have the admin team assist us with certain things. And we got to try to start stepping away from doing the busy work and start doing dollar producing activities, things that are actually going to make us money, which is, you know, it may be you being on the phone, setting appointments, Versus, you know, you filling out certain documents. Yeah. So again, it's, it's just a little bit of a mind shift. Guys. Yeah. So that was the big mindset shift, right? Is, and that's the thing is we were grinding and we were fully in production for over 10 years. So don't get me wrong, right? Like for some of you guys, yeah, I want to stop producing today, right? And you've only been in real estate for a year or two. No, that's not what I'm saying. We were like grinding top producers, closing 20, 30, 40, 50 deals a year each for 10 plus years before we got to a point where we're like, shit, I've already closed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of transactions. Now, now the next level for me is this, right? So could we have skipped all those 10 years of grind? I don't know, right? It may, I mean, we might, we could have been able to sh maybe shorten it. Like if we would have found coaching sooner, but you still have to go through that first part to be good at the second part, if that makes sense. Right. Like if you've never been in, in battle, if you've never dealt with a client, like how can I sit here and preach to you guys how to go talk to your client if I've never talked to clients? Right. So all that experience of closing a lot of deals myself personally has given me the skills to now be able to coach other people. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so building with the end in mind and you guys can take notes. I'm also going to put together a sheet with all these notes anyway. So I'm going to pass these out but I really wanna just kind of speak freely and kind of hit some of the bullet points. Um, and whatever stands out to you, Phil, yeah. uh, let's see. So here's the next point, is the importance of knowing your worth. And what do we mean by that? Um, essentially the big mindset shift guys is that you are trading time for dollars every single day, right? If you are spending your time going on a listing appointment or a buyer consultation or showing a buyer a home or writing an offer, you can do the math and you can say, hey, if I get this deal on contract, it's going to equal X amount of commission after splits, X amount's going to come to my pocket. And you could say, okay, how many hours is it going to take for me to, you know, do this start to finish? And you can do a calculation and you can figure out what your time is worth. Right. And if you want to make a certain amount of money, you can easily do the calculation and say, OK, this is how much I want to make. This is how much time I want to work in my business. This is how much vacation I want per year. And you could do the math and you can see what your dollar per hour activity is worth. This was a huge, huge mindset shift because a lot of times without you knowing is you are spending time in your business doing tasks that are less than what your time is worth if you have a certain goal in mind. So let me give you a real life example, right? Let's take out, everyone take out their calculator. If you have your calculator in front of you on your phone or whatever, I want you to enter how much money do you wanna make in the next 12 months? What's your income goal? Maybe it's 100,000, maybe it's 150,000, maybe it's 200,000, maybe it's 300,000. But realistically like, What's your income goal for the next 12 months? And this is just an exercise, right? And I'll do it with you. It's going to be different for everybody. Uh, but let's say your income goal was 150,000. I'm just going to use that. 150,000. 
you can now take that 150,000, what you want to work, what you want to make. And then the next question you got to ask yourself is how many hours do you want to work throughout the year, right? How much time off do you want? Do you want to work? There's 52 weeks in a year, right? Do you want to work all 52 weeks? Do you want to have two weeks of vacation? Do you want to have a whole month of vacation spread out throughout the year? Do you want to work, you know, three months, take one week off, three months, take one week off, right? right. How many hours do you realistically want to work every day, per week, and throughout the year? And just do the math. Um, for easy math, right? And this could look different for you guys. There's 52 weeks in a year. Let's say you want two weeks off, right? This is just for an easy exercise. You may want four weeks off. Me personally, I want like two months off out of the year, spread out throughout the year, right? A few days off here, a week off here, a week off here, stuff like that. And maybe adds up to eight weeks. So I would go 52 minus eight. That's 46. No, 44. 44. 44, <laughs> 44 right? That's 44 weeks that I want to work. And every single week I want to work 40 hours. I mean, let's just say, right? 40 hours. 44 times 40. So 44 weeks times 40, 1,760 hours. 50,000 while working 1,760 hours, I can now take 150,000 divided by 1,760. So that means every single hour that I work, I'm paying myself $85 an hour. That's what my time is worth based off that formula. Right? Asking yourself, okay, if I'm worth 85 bucks an hour based off my income goals, right? Based off the time that I want off, is are the tasks that I am doing right now in my business, are they $85 an hour plus? Or can I pay someone 20 bucks an hour, 25 bucks an hour? Or can I leverage that out? Or can I add a partner on the deal, you know, and do the math there where you're getting some of your time back, back there, right? Because if you're spending your time doing things that are a lot less than what your dollar per hour is worth, you are pushing yourself away from that goal. Does that make sense? So when you know what your time is worth and like, like we should all have a goal to consistently increase that, right? Maybe you're 150 now, maybe next year you're 250. Maybe at one point you're, uh, you wanna make half a million dollars, right? And then you gotta do the number and now each one of your hours is worth 250 bucks an hour, right? So you only wanna spend your time doing things that are going to pay you at least that much per hour. I explain that right. Yeah. I think the other thing too, guys, it's to, it's to recognize the industry that we're in, right? We're in an industry where you get to dictate how much your time is worth, right? You, you get to really get to dictate that versus, you know, us signing up at a nine to five job where they dictate what your worth is. In this industry here, you know, you, you can make $150 an hour easily right and, and i think that that's why this conversation is good because it allows you to make those choices on where you're going to spend your time where you're going to spend your energy on on so that you can make that that income goal exactly uh, so when you know what your time is then you can start looking at everything you do throughout your day in terms of am i is it worth my time right and that was a big mindset shift for me in the beginning too. Like when I, when I was first doing, when we first started doing off loans, I remember, you know, clients would shop you around stuff like that. And we have flexibility on what we charge them and what we make on the deal. Same thing with commission, right? When you go on a listing appointment or whatever, you can quickly do the math and you can say, okay, based off this price, based off how much it is, based off what I'm going to get paid after splits, after costs, after marketing or whatever it might be. I'm going to make X amount of dollars and it's going to take me X amount of hours to do this deal. And then you can start setting like a minimum expectation. Mm -hmm. So I remember in the beginning when we were doing loans, uh, my number was like, if I don't net 3000 bucks off of this deal after everything, whoever I got to pay out or whatever that I got to charge the client, if it doesn't make me three grand, mm -hmm. then I didn't want the deal. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was kind of my benchmark. That's how I looked at every single deal. Um, same thing when I was in, in real estate and I was in production and I was working with buyers and sellers. Then it got to a point where I was like, Hey, I don't want to work with buyers anymore, 
But if I do work with buyers, I want to make sure they're like the higher price point buyer. So it's worth my time because I knew that the more I said yes to certain activities or certain clients, if it wasn't paying me what my dollar per hour activity is worth based off what I want to make and how much vacation and all that, it was just moving me further away from my goal. Let me, let me say, just one thing though, guys, one thing, I want you guys to recognize something. It's extremely important that we recognize this. Enrique got to that point where he got to decide, right? And I think that's very important to illustrate on this call is because if you're not at that point, if you're still new or you still haven't done 10 million in volume, then you are going to start taking on maybe that million dollar deal. You're not, you know, to, to get, to gain that experience or yeah. to partner with someone. Right. So, so again, I, I really need to say that because a lot of times people, you know, again, I know there's definitely a minimum, but I also think there's also experience that needs yeah. to be brought out for some of the newer people on this call that they need to get that they, they, they need to, he had at least 30 million that he was closing where he's like, he sat back and said, you know what? Now I'm not touching anything under 1.5 million. Yeah. Right. He didn't do that his first year of real estate. Yeah. First, first yeah. couple of years, I took everything on. Right? right. I took everything on because everything gave me experience. Right. I was doing the small deals, the big deals, the medium, the hard clients, the easy clients, like yeah. all the different things, because I knew that I just needed to get my reps in. I needed to get comfortable talking to people. I needed to get good. I needed to understand the process. I yes. needed to develop that muscle, that sales muscle, right? And then after I had success doing that, then I started saying, okay, now I need to choose yes. where I'm focusing my energy on. It's so that, that's the thing, right? I didn't just come out and say, eh, I'm too good for that one, right? From no. day one. Not at all, right? You have to have the experience to back that up. So you have to earn your right to be able to do that. So those of you guys that are newer, you got to put the work. Then when you get to a point where you're like, hey, I'm closing deals. I know how to do this stuff. I know the contracts. I know how to get deals. I know how to go out there and hustle. Now, if I want to earn more money in the same amount of time, I need to now start picking and choosing who I'm taking on. Yes. Right? So there's that transition there. Um, so it got to me, it got to a point where it's like, okay, um, I'm trying to slowly get out of working with buyers, right? Because I, I eventually want to only work on listings. But I wasn't just going to completely stop working on buyers because buyers were paying the bills, right? They were making money come in. So I said, okay, I'm just going to set a minimum. If the buyer is less than this price, um, I'm going to delegate that out or pass it off or maybe put a partner on it so that I'm not having to take on the whole load, right? And then I'm going to focus my energy on this price and up. Those are the ones that I'm going to take on personally. Those are the ones that I'm going to work personally. Those are the ones that I'm going to go out there and show homes to. Because if I just do the math and the time it takes, it's going to pay me what I'm trying to get. And then all these other small ones, like I'll still make money off those by using a partner or somebody else. Um, and then from there, it got to a point where it was, okay, now I no longer want to work with buyers. And I only want to focus on listings. So I was taking on any listing, right? Lower price point listings, medium, higher price point listings, because I just only wanted to do listings. And I was starting to pass off every single buyer or I was having very, very little interaction on those ones, or maybe I was only doing the consultation. Someone else was doing all the showings for me. I was doing the negotiating because that was my highest dollar producing activity was to meet with the client, get them to work with me, let someone else do all the grunt work, all the showings, running around, all that stuff. And then I would step in when it was time to negotiate. Right. And slowly, slowly kind of delegating things out and focusing only on the highest dollar producing activities. Mm -hmm. um, and then it got to a point where it was like, now I'm only doing listings. Uh, and then I did the same thing, right? Now I'm only going to do listings above this price. And then like Rob agents were like my new listing agents in training. Rob was taking all the listings that I wasn't doing, or I was slowly adding him to partner on listings. And then it got to a point where now Rob was doing a lot of the listings that I brought in. And then I got out of doing listings, right? Mm -hmm. But I want you guys to see like the progression, right? It didn't start overnight. It was just understanding that I knew how much I wanted to make. I knew how much time I wanted to put into it. I knew where I wanted to focus my time. And then I slowly started making the tweaks and the changes, um, you know, to get me closer to that goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to stop right here. Any questions? What questions do you guys have? I got a whole bunch of stuff I can go over. And obviously this is only an hour training. So this could even be like a multi-part training. Um, what questions do you guys have? Are there any questions or feedback you have based off what we just said right now? 
about you, Rob, because you've seen the transition. Okay, what, what do you, what, what questions do you? Or maybe input. Or input, yeah, input that you've seen. Because you've made some transition also throughout your, your business. Yeah, I think the biggest transition, guys, is uh, I got my, if you look at my production, it's it's, it's majority listings. Uh, there's maybe a few here and there where I'll do like they're, they're basically lay me down when it comes to like buyers. And uh, I think this is the concept that we usually have. I know some of the newer agents when you jump into the system, they say, "Well, you know, uh, how come I'm doing all the work as a junior agent?" And you see a lot of these senior agents that are kind of running around, just kind of dictating things. Right. And I think that's just how it goes as far as steps. There is a process that we have here at PRG that if you follow it, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to end up where I'm at. So um, the beginning stages, if you're brand new to this whole thing, your job is just to learn as much as you can from a guy that's been in the business for 17 years or, you know, uh, uh, you know, veterans that are here uh, in real estate. So learn as much as you can. And then at that point, take advantage of the same seats that we're doing right now. I think, you know, who's a better I've been doing this now for quite some time now, right? But I think people like Anna, right, who, who's here can now kind of see the transition of saying, hey, listen, I can now start delegating some of the stuff, you know, some of the gripes that I might have a long time ago, right? Uh, is now because now I'm in this position. So just know that, you know, this, this the position that we're at is not just exclusive to some people. It, it, it's for everybody. It's just that there is a game and there is a process that everyone has to play the game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah slowly work your way up yeah i mean even again guys even when enrique and i first started in the business 20 years ago we started exactly the way we start a lot of new people in the office which is on the phones learning scripts that's exactly the way we started right i did that for about a year is learning scripts setting appointments for other other uh back then it was we we're doing mortgages so I was setting up appointments for there's five, five like senior loan officers. It was Josh Sucero, Louis Omar, Carlos Hernandez, Reza Khan, and someone else. And um, again, guys, I was setting appointment. That was my job was to set appointments. And then I went on consults with these, with these agents. And then I learned from these agents. And then I was able to book my own appointment and then close and do my own consult and close my own deal and walk into the process. So again, I think, uh, and then now we got the coaching where we're able to implement systems to go ahead and hire, train, recruit, and teach and provide leads and systems to our agents. So you, we, we started exactly where some of you guys are starting right now, yeah. right? We didn't skip any steps, yeah. right? So some of the linear progressions that you'll see guys is that uh, when we first started off many years ago, leads were the problem right, is trying to get a lead to come in. And that's not the problem any longer, right? So what's going to happen is you're eventually going to come to a point where you're going to say, hey, listen, my time is worth more than money, right? Because the, the, the leads are always coming in, right? That's going to be at an individual where you guys make that decision. But regards to the fact of when that is, uh, the, the hard part is going to make that transition to leverage. I leverage the shit out of the team, guys. Uh, uh, for those who know me, know that that I leverage the shit out of it. But there's a reason why my time is, my, my time is yeah. valuable. Let's talk about right. that, right? Because Rob does leverage the team a lot, right? Like he goes on a listing, he'll, a lot of times he'll add someone onto the listing with him. Or he splits from all your deals. Have been a lot of deals. deals he splits, right? Even though he can easily do those deals on his own. But what's important to Rob now versus before is now Rob, you know, he's married, he has two kids. So like your time is a lot more valuable now than money is, right? So finding that balance where you're making good money and also getting your time, you know, that's, that's the best place yeah. to be in my opinion, right? Because you can have all the money in the world. You could be killing it, making a ton of money. But if you don't got time to enjoy your life or to do anything or to be with your family or your loved ones or anything like that, or go out and enjoy your money because you're too busy working, then what's the point of having all this money, right? That's the great thing about what we built here with this team is that Rob has a choice whether he wants to close it on his own or he wants to add someone on it so he can get some of his time back. Yeah. Guys, and that's a choice, guys. And that's a choice where you can also get the choice of do you want me to pause you on Zillow Flex? Do you want me to do you want me to go ahead and pause you on the leads? That, that's a choice, right? Some people just put me on all the leads, put me on everything. Other people are like, hey, listen, I want to be off on these times. Yeah, right. Which is great. And yeah. just to give you guys perspective, guys, I mean, on my end, I haven't shown a house. I can't even remember when I showed. I haven't worked an open house because I have everyone else that wants to work my, my open houses, 
right? So my weekends are pretty much free. My, I, 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 I made more money, right? Just because I'm able to, uh, I'm able to be at a lot more places than, than I am if I were in production, learn, I mean, uh, uh, showing people homes. Yeah. My, my time is a lot more free and I'm able to be a family man as well to go take my kids to jujitsu or, or whatever they're up to at that point. Yeah. So, but I do agree, guys, this is 17 years. This is 17 years that, that we've gotten here, right? In the beginning, you don't have that choice. In the beginning, you guys need to hustle. Weekend. You need to work. You need to push as much as you can. You need to build that bank account so that you're able to have this freedom in the future. But just know shit like that does exist for the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, even for me, like I do a lot of networking in general with a lot of realtors who have been in the business for a long time. And it's the same thing, like going back to, Hey, like I have a friend who's like, I make sure two weeks out of the month, I'm hosting an open house and that's how I'm getting my leads Mm -hmm. or I'm going to do, I'm going to go show homes right before, but it's the same thing. Just being consistent and just going out there. You know, unfortunately he doesn't have a team like we do here where a lot of people can help you but it's always going back and doing the basics. Yeah. And there are agents, guys, that have been in the business for 30, 40 years who are still working open houses every weekend, who don't, like, who are just stressed out, stuck in their business, right? They haven't, either the light bulb didn't go off or no one showed them or they didn't get the coaching or they didn't know that you can do this sort of stuff, right? Because it's not like the path of like creating a bunch of leverage and only working on certain things it's very few people that actually take advantage of that, right? Because they either don't know or they have a really limiting mindset where they're like, well, I don't want to share my commission with someone else or I don't want to pay this. I'll just do it myself and make all the money. But then now you're trading your time, right? So like I said in the beginning of this conversation is you're always trading your time for dollars, right? It's like cutting your lawn, right? I don't like cutting my lawn. So I pay someone to cut the lawn, right? Again, the reason why I don't like it because as a kid, I used to have to always cut my lawn. Yeah. My dad made me. But again, there's 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 things that now you can you can pick and choose on where you want to spend your time. Enrique has a good one. He doesn't like doing laundry, right? So, so I don't like so I'm, <laughs> so many, and some people may judge me and say, "Oh, you're bougie. You don't like doing your laundry." No, I don't like doing my laundry because if I'm trying to like build a company and I'm trying to spend time with my kids and I'm trying to have fun and I'm trying to do the things that I want to do for myself, I got to start looking at like. Do I spend two hours doing laundry on a Sunday or do I pay somebody a hundred bucks to do that? And I get those two hours back and now I can go take my kids to the park. Yep. Now I can go out for ice cream. Now I can take my boat out. I could do something like that. Right. And it refreshes him so he can be ready for yeah, Monday. So I'm ready for Monday. Right. So um, things like Instacart. Right. Like, and this leads to the next point. The next point was how to turn tasks into le- leverageable activities. Right. Every single thing that you do can be leveraged out. You just got to decide what stuff is worth being leveraged out. Where do I spend my time and what stuff can I delegate? So Mm -hmm. a great exercise is, is called an elevate and delegate. And I know like Zahar, me and Zahar did this a while back and she made a bunch of changes in in her lifestyle. Um, But it's simply just drawing four quadrants on a piece of paper. And I'll send this to you guys in Slack. And you got to start writing, like listing all your different tasks that you do. And you put them in different categories based off like, Things that I love to do and I must do, like only I can do them. Things that I love to do, but someone else can do. Things that I hate to do, but I still do them. Right? It's basically something like that, right? And you start putting things and you can do that in your business. And then you can also do that in your personal life. So like think about in your business, what stuff do you do on a daily basis? Or what stuff do you do when you're working on a transaction that you love to do? Or you feel like, hey, this is the best use of my time. And then what stuff am I doing where I'm like, hate doing this can someone else do this for me i hate doing a docusign right or i hate passing out the flyers or uh i hate emails right like i wish i could just pay someone to do my emails for me you can right you just got to decide like is that worth putting my money towards so some of the things that i wrote here is that uh number one is it takes money to make money right and that's a concept that a lot of people do not grasp right they're worried about saving a buck when the buck that they're saving is preventing them from making more money because it's taking up their time. Remember, we're trading time for dollars. Anything that you guys take away from this conversation uh, is the phrase, you are always trading time for dollars, right? So if some of you guys that are making good money now that are closing deals that are making, you know, hundred grand, 200 grand a year, you now have some money to play with, right? So you now got to look at your business like, hey, 
Are there things that I can now do with my money that will get me more time back and allow me to be more productive? Do right? high level stuff. So I can focus more on the higher level stuff, which in our business of, of salespeople, our highest dollar producing activity is what? What's the highest dollar producing activity that you can do in your business today in a sales job? Being in front of clients and meeting, meeting clients, setting appointments. Being in front of a client, right? Negotiating a deal, putting a deal together. That's probably the highest and best use of your time. Going on a listing appointment or maybe meeting with a new uh, buyer. buyer that's going to, you're going to sign them up or maybe negotiating the contract the highest dollar producing activities because you know if you get that that deal to go through or you get that client to sign up it's going to equal this check now once you get that client to sign up like going out and showing the homes or being the one who actually goes in and physically types up the offer or being the one who sends out the email or being the one who puts the sign on the front yard or being the one who makes the flyer those are all things that could be delegated out put it on the lock box put the lock box on right yeah like you got to now think of your business in that way, right? Like if you're like, damn, like I could probably have paid someone. I'm making good money now, right? Like I could probably have paid someone 20 bucks to go put this lockbox for me. Or I could probably hire a virtual assistant to be the one that types up all my offers for me so that I can go on another appointment while they type up the offers. And I, and I think a lot of time, guys, the great thing about this delegate elevate exercise, it also tells you, you know, like there's certain things that you like to do, yeah. right? And for me, what I look at a lot of times, you know, as we, we feel like if we're doing busy work, that we had a successful day, right? And, and, and it's not true, guys. It, it's, it's no, do, do the stuff that's going to get you to that next level. Do the work that's going to get you that, those dollar producing activities. And I think just, you know, as a sales agent, or if you're in this industry, sometimes you feel like, oh, you know, I went to I went to Home Depot, got the lockbox, or I got the combo box, or I put the sign up. That to me is that's not your role, right? Your role is to get the next deal, right? To sit in front of another client. And if you may, if you start boiling it down to those basic things, these are dollar producing activities. This is where I should be focusing my time. You, you're going to see your business just take off. Guys, yep. And, and even to this day, I mean, I've been on Instagram stories. I've seen agents that's been doing this for twenty years, and they're you know they're out there putting hammering, up a the, hammering the sign and putting the lockbox on. I'm like, bro, twenty years in the game, and you're still the one putting up the sign. And, and again, guys, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to belittle anyone, but I just, I, this is a whole mind shift, guys. You know, I, I see them on there saying, "Hey, do you know anywhere to go make a spare key?" And I'm like, it's Tuesday. You're a top agent. You're running around trying to make a spare key. Well, don't you have like a, an assistant or someone that can help you go ahead and do stuff like that, right? And, and again, guys, these are just small examples that I that, that kind of pop up. But I want you to dive deep into your own business, into your own life, and see what you can you can start delegating. You can go ahead and start doing more dollar producing activities. Yeah. Definitely. I think also leveraging guys allows you to, uh, to kind of do what you want at that point, right? Yeah. J uh, Jason hates cutting his grass. I like cutting my grass. And this is no joke. I really do like cutting my grass, right? But I think it allows you that freedom to allow you to do some of the things that you even want to do in your business, right? I I, I, I like prospecting. I don't know. We, we grew up uh, calling people. So let's talk so about like that, right? Problem. Because because when we say this, then some, some people start saying, well, I don't, I got to take certain things off, but there may be certain things that also bring you joy. Yeah. So you got to find that balance, right? Like Rob, to me, I don't like cutting my grass, right? Like I don't get joy out of cutting the grass. It's hot, but he, that may be therapeutic for him, right? That may be his time to kind of unplug, maybe get away from the kids, maybe just go out there and put some music on, mow his lawn. And that might, some Those people, are, right, Gar hey, gardening for some people is therapeutic, right? Yeah. And that's fine. But he gets to pick and choose, right? Yeah, he's doing that because choose. he wants to, not because he's trying to save, you know, 100, bucks, bucks. A month, yeah, 100 bucks a month or whatever it costs, right? <laughs> now, there may be some things that you're doing that they don't really bring you joy, but you're just doing it because you don't want to pay somebody. My trees, I don't cut my fucking trees. I yeah. hire somebody to cut my trees. I do none of that <laughs> shit. Right? So they do a, a whole spring clean in the back. All I do is cut grass. That's all I do. But, but again, I, I delegate that work to someone else because yeah. I don't want to do that. Work. So here's the thing is there's no glory in saving a couple bucks and doing something that just brings you pain, right? Like that's just like, dude, this is not doing anything for me right now. Right? It's not making me happier. It's not getting me one step closer to my goal. 
It's not giving my yeah. time back. And I'm just, you know, I'm being cheap. Right. And, and again, a lot of people who are, and I think, unfortunately guys, I think also it, it comes out, I mean, it's definitely to my upbringing, right. The way I was brought up, it was like, my dad's like, you should just do it. You know? And I'm like, well, dad, why don't you have someone do this for us? So then we can go do this. So also guys, it's probably ingrained in a lot of us yeah. that we have to do these things, right? We have to wash our, we have to, you know, cut the lawn, whatever it may be. And, and I think that's, again, and we keep going back to this word of this mind shift. And it, it's going to take a lot of times because we've been programmed just to do the busy work. So you have to unprogram yourself and start focusing on dollar producing activities. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bring up something that might that 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 whole thing is is the money issue, right? Because that's that's the biggest thing. Is what happens is when you start to delegate things in real estate, your checks start to go down. The money issue, and the way that I see it, guys, is that we we're fortunate enough to live in a place where at a certain level here at PRG, you're making some pretty good fucking money. All right, I mean, where where a thousand dollars here, two thousand dollars here, three thousand dollars here really doesn't affect uh, life because the big chunk of change you still were able to carry it. Right. So that was big. The, my biggest mind shift, a mind shift. If you look at my, my production, I add people to it. Am I giving a big chunk of change to the junior agents? Yes, I am giving a big chunk of change, but I'm also able to in return by my time. I'm also able to help out people, um, you know, through their journey in real estate to eventually become at that point and then start helping someone else. Yeah. So guys, if you really sit down and dissect what you're making, at a certain level here at PRG, you're making some pretty good fucking money, right? So, you know, figure out, now you're going to have to figure out how much your time is really worth to put a number of dollar on that side. For me, so let me lot. give you some examples, yeah, real guys. Quick, real quick, guys. Again, I just want to reinforce that this conversation is a higher level, right? This is for people that are producing. Again, I know we have other people that are, that are newer. But I, want, I just want to make sure this is said a few times. And then the people that, that are newer, that this is the level that you're going to want to obtain to get to yes yeah. right i just want to make that clear guys so where can you invest your money right you're making good money now where can you invest your money to increase your production get your time back i wrote down a few things number one is an assistant an assistant is probably the first thing that i would look at investing my money in if you're already producing at a high level you got a bunch of deals coming in you're consistent with your production what's going to get you to the next level is getting some support on a lot of the busy work now the great thing about our team model is that we do have some administrative stuff leverage already built in, but it only goes to a certain point, right? Like they're helping you on certain parts of the transaction. They're not necessarily helping you on your day-to-day -day writing offers and doing things like that. So obviously utilize what's provided by the team, utilize the administrative staff to help you with, you know, once the deal's in contract or your listing support and stuff like that. But you guys that are already up and producing, if you're closing, you know, 20 plus deals a year, you need to really consider is, is it worth paying an assistant, maybe someone part-time, maybe a virtual assistant. A virtual assistant is a really, really good option um, where you can train them on how to do certain things that you want to take off your plate so that you can get your time back and go out there and either produce or spend your time doing things that you want to do. Yeah. Right. So um, like I said, it's all starts with you writing down all your tasks, right? And These kind of and kind of going back to that, guys, again, is that we will help you with that, right? We will help with the training with your assistant. We, you know, we, we have systems in place that we're leveraging. So again, if, if that's something you need, you know, you just get with Enrique or myself and we will go in and help help train and get your assistant up to par. Yeah, I mean, you can get a virtual assistant for six bucks, eight bucks, yeah. ten bucks an hour. We have one tin she's freaking awesome out of the philippines that does a lot of the back end stuff doing a lot of the data entry entering stuff really good at, on the computer and we probably only pay eight to ten bucks an hour mm -hmm. right and the, works in a different time zone so she's doing things like at two in the morning for us it's like shit's happening we wake up and it's already done right so know. if you do the math right if you're paying someone eight bucks an hour Let's do that math. Eight bucks an hour times 40 hours a week times 52, 16,640 bucks that you would have invested. But what is that going to do to your business? How many more appointments can you go on? How much time can you get back, right, from doing that type of stuff? And this is a write off in your business, right? This is a, where you get to deduct that from your income. Um, yes, we get notifications at 1 a.m. Uh, someone raised their hand. Oh, that was me. 
I actually would vouch for that. But, I think I was closing about like two to three deals a year. And then I think I was like, oh, I don't want to do offers. I don't want to do contracts. I can just leverage someone out because I hate those. And I was honest with myself. I just rather, my strongest point is negotiations and contracts and just be with the listing agent all the time. And I hired my first VA and now it quickly became from three deals to 20. <laughs> so it's worth it. It's go. worth it. How much do you pay your VA, Carla? Um, she's a good friend of mine. So I got a good discount. She's also from the Philippines. So I think I was paying her about, not per hour. So the first few months it was per transaction because she was actually my TC that at first and I quickly became like, oh, wait, like it's better to have a VA to do all of these admin stuff who would take care of my task. I'll take care of the client stuff and everything. And she would book appointments for me and she will set up my day per like every day show properties, MLS sheet, everything's already prepared for. I just have to print it. So I think I was doing per file and then now it became per month. So it was about 500 a month, but I did, oh gosh, worth it. <laughs> 500 a month. Yeah. That's, that's 6,000 bucks a year, right? If you're making 150 grand a year plus, six grand a year to have someone doing all these freaking tasks for you, um, yeah, so get with Carla, guys. She, she can definitely hey, real share quick, some of her experience. Real quick, Carla, Carla, how long yeah. have you been? How long have you been licensed? I just want to share with the team. How long have you been licensed? Um, I got licensed in March last year, but I started doing real estate of August last year, and then I've closed my first transaction of August last year, and then now I'm on track to hopefully close thirty by end of the year. So I've closed twenty now, I think. Nice, nice, good job. Yeah, so awesome. Awesome. thank you for sharing, Carla. Thank it's you. good to hear that, right? Because you can hear from someone who is actually utilizing stuff that we're talking about right now. And um, no, that's awesome, Carla. So, an assistant, right? You can use someone to assist you with doing, you know, delegating some of the tedious tasks so you can focus on the higher dollar producing activities. Marketing support, right? We have DJ. You can definitely utilize DJ. So, utilize the, the stuff that's already provided. But let's say you want someone to do like ongoing, consistent marketing for you, post on your social media for you, do all your email campaigns every single month. That same VA can probably do all those different things, right? You can train them to do those different things that you want to do. Um, where would I invest my money? Coaching, right? Let's say there's a specific uh, part of the business you want to learn about, right? Before you pay for anything, always see what's already included. There's a lot of stuff that we already have that you don't have to pay for. And there's a lot of stuff that EXP provides where it's free coaching already. But let's say you want to coach on a certain thing or you want to sign up for a certain course. I know for us, like we paid for that coaching for five years on how to build a successful team. I've also invested in, in courses like listing appointment courses, uh, you know, buyer courses, how to tap into luxury properties, like different courses that I've, I've paid. So investing into courses that are going to improve your skill set is definitely um, awesome. Um, I wrote down support at home, right? Everyone has different situations at home. Some of us have kids. Some of us have more responsibilities than others. When you start making money and you want to make more money or get more of your time back, it's going to be worth it for you to invest into support at home, whether that's investing into, I don't go grocery shopping no more. I use Instacart only. I pay the extra 10 bucks for Instacart or the yearly membership, because I know that's going to save me X amount of hours per week that I can either dedicate back to my family or dedicate back to my business. Yeah. I don't do laundry anymore, right? I don't clean my house anymore. That was one of the things for me, like being so busy and having two kids. I use Instacart all the time. I use DoorDash probably every single day. Um, I freaking, I don't do my laundry, right? I don't do my laundry anymore. I don't cut my grass. I don't clean my house. Was it always like that? Hell no, right? Eventually, it got like that. Am I paying probably several hundred bucks a month when you add all those things up? Yeah. But at this point in my career, like all that time that it frees up, how much time do I get back? Yeah. And how much is my, how much is each one of my hours worth? Right. And I think, guys, another thing is you got to imagine that we have, you know, we, we let's say we have 100% energy. And then once you start doing these tasks that are not high producing or dollar producing, it starts. It starts eating away at your energy, so that when you when you are ready to do that dollar producing activity or that high level activity, you don't have as much energy or focus, 
right? So, so again, those are things that those are things you may not be able to measure. Those are things that may not be as tangible, but that does take a toll on on the way you you kind of execute and how you do something or how you perform at a high level. Because again, you, you don't want to get your energy eaten up by all these little tasks. So then when you're ready to perform, you're not able to, right? At a high that's level. a good point. That's a good point because that's the invisible thing, right? Where, where it comes in the form of stress and anxiety and overwhelm and stuff like that, where it's like Wi-Fi, right? It's going, it's there. You don't see it, but it's there, right? And you may not even be conscious of it, but when you're adding up, like, think about it, like you're, like you said, energy or, or your day is like a plate, right? And you got to put your workload on there. You got to put your laundry stuff. You got to put your personal stuff. You got to put your gym time. You got to put your clients are pulling at you, right? All these different things. And before you know it, your plate is stacked up like super, super high. And then it's time to go home and maybe dedicate yourself to your family or your kids or whatever. And you may not have nothing left because you've already spent it all, right? So that's the thing where you got to be really, really honest with yourself and say like, shit, are there things that I can change in my life or do I just need to bite the bullet and maybe pay for certain things so that I can now come back either refreshed or I can free up time, right? And dedicate those to really where I, where I want to be. What's going to get me closer to my goals. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset shift, right? Um, the last thing I wrote, wrote down was systems and tools to create efficiency. Those are definitely worth your time. I'll give you just like an easy example. Like you guys know, I do a lot of videos, right? So like if I see an app that's going to help me put my videos out or edit my videos, and even if it costs like on Apple, 20 bucks, 30 bucks or whatever it might be, I'll just buy that shit, right? Because I can probably go figure it out and do it the manual way and like spend all this time trying to do it. Or I'm like, no, I'm just going to pay for the pro edition. It's 30 bucks a month. I'm going to do that. But now it's going to allow me to put out way better video content, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to pay for this software that's going to track all my finances for me, even though it's a hundred bucks a month. But now I don't got to sit there with the calculator trying to calculate all my stuff, yeah. right? So it could be stuff that you use personally. It could be stuff that you use in your business, but paying for systems and tools that create more efficiency allows you to get your time back as well. And, and guys, I know really quick, I know one thing I just, I want to give you guys some real life examples of things that I know we talked about, you know, a lot of, a lot of personal stuff that we leverage, but Enrique and I, in our business, what we've done over the years, we've leveraged, you know, we, we have an accountant, we have a CPA, we have someone like DJ, we have, um, you know, we have attorneys, we have, we have things in our business that we used to have to do, you know, like our accounting or our, um, there's a difference. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's an accountant and there's a CPA. Those are two different, two different roles. And so before I was a freaking accountant and I'd go to him like, shit, I hate the end of December, right before Christmas, I'm doing all the numbers. And so we ended yeah. up getting a system in place, which it just made our lives way easier. And you have to understand we have three businesses. We have our lending business, our real estate business, and our flip business. And then we have a rental property. So there's a lot of different accounts. So again, I want to also give you examples of things that you can leverage, not just in your personal life, but within your business. You want to make sure that you kind of put those things in place so you can focus again on those dollar producing activities. Yeah. All right, guys, I have a bunch of other stuff, but I'm going to continue this combo on our next one because there's like a whole nother second about managing your money and knowing your numbers and stuff like that, which I think is really valuable. And that, that could be its own freaking one hour conversation. Um, but I hope you guys, the main goal today, guys, was to really open up your mindset, right? Open up your mindset to, if you want to get to the next level, you're going to have to make certain changes in your business and you're going to have to change the way you look at your business and the way you look at your time, right? That's the biggest thing. Right. If you're just working obliviously and you're not really acknowledging like where you're spending your time, where you're spending your energy, uh, what tasks you're doing when someone else can maybe do that for you, like you're never going to level up. You're always going to be in the same position. Right. So if you want to take yourself to the next level, you got to start taking your business to the next level. You got to treat your time like a business as well. Right. What's the return on investment for my time right now? Right. If I'm spending an hour today, like in this class right now, right? We did a, you guys could spend this hour doing something else. But I think this right here was a good return on investment for your one hour of time because now it's going to be hopefully a domino that kind of opens your mind to all these other possibilities, right? So 
uh, I wrote this down. I'm going to end with this. I wrote in a nine to five, right? Like, cause there's the other alternative, right? We're all in business here. You can go work a nine to five and there's different pros and cons, but in a nine to five, a lot of things are managed for you. Mm -hmm. Your time is managed when you show up, when you eat lunch, you know, your bank account, your direct deposit, your 401k, all those different things, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of things are managed for you. There are training wheels, basically, right? There's a lot of things that are in place that, you know, but you're also stuck to the nine to five, right? You're also going to be uh, limited on your potential, right? Because your nine to five is always going to come with limits, but there's also the safety net, right? In a business, there are no training wheels. There's no training wheels in business, right? You're on your own. Your potential is unlimited, right? You can earn as much money as you want. You can take this business and make it as big as you want. You can be the next PRG. You can open up an office. You could be the next team leader. Whatever you want to do, you can do it, right? It's unlimited potential, but there is no training. There are no training wheels, right? There's no safety net, which means the upside is unlimited, but you also can crash and burn. You can crash and burn if you don't grasp some of these key concepts. You can stress yourself out. You can overwork yourself. You can burn yourself out if you don't really grasp some of these business fundamentals. This means you have to be in control of how you do things, where you spend your time, where you spend your energy. Um, you have to be even more disciplined than someone who's just working the nine to five clock and eight clock now. But the payoff, right? The payoff on the other side if you really like go deep with this and you really become a business person and you master all these fundamentals and you really become interested in how all this works and how you can take yourself to the next level, the payoff is huge. It's unlimited, right? I know for us, like it's changed our whole entire life, right? Like our business has changed our life in, in so many ways that, that we can't even explain. So I uh, hope you guys got some value today, guys. These are a lot of more fundamentals, more key concepts. If you guys need help, like if something sparked your interest, like, hey, what you said was good. This is a part that I need to work on. This is where you now get with us one-on-one -on -one so that we can help you in that particular area. Because we went over a lot of different things and everyone's at a different level, right? Yeah, and then when we end, guys, if you can do me one favor, in Slack, can you please, can you please post one takeaway that you got from this meeting today, guys? I, I, want to, I, I really want to see a really Hey guys, Enrique spends a lot of time prepping for this. So if you can participate, just give us one key takeaway in Slack. That'd be awesome, guys. I'm gonna put I'm, I'm gonna put a post, just reply to my post so it's all in that same thread. Uh, oh, Enrique and Jason. Thank you guys. So whoever is yeah. interested on um learning about how to hire a VA or anything, I'm happy to help out. So right. there you go, guys. Reach out to Carla. She's using a VA at a high level. Get with her if you want to know about hiring a VA. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Let me know if you need something. All right, guys. Thank you.